So I have a couple of tables set up here. And what I'm going to do is first go through the scenario if we have acceleration, how can we ca calculate velocity and position off of that? And then if we have position, could we go ahead and reverse the process and get our velocity and acceleration out of it too? I have it set up with just a random positive velocity to start out or acceleration to start out with. So this would be a positive force and then a negative force slowing it down afterwards followed by zero acceleration. Okay, so acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, which means velocity is going to be acceleration times time. Now this is the change in velocity. So if we have some initial velocity, the second velocity is going to be equal to acceleration times what kind of time has changed. And then from this, we're going to need to add on what our previous velocity was. So if our acceleration is positive, this is going to be getting larger and larger. And if our acceleration is negative, then it'll go smaller and smaller. OK, so there's our velocity. The next one, what if we would like to calculate positions? So let me pull another equation over here. Here is our position equation. And watch that previous video to see where this comes from. So our, we're going to have to start out with some initial conditions. So if I move this over to the other side, x equals x naught plus everything over here. So we have x is equal to what our initial position was doing plus our initial velocity. Now I'm coming up to 0, our initial velocity times whatever time was going on here. So here's our time. So that's our v naught t plus 1 half times a. So there's our a is this e5 column here times, whoops, and then here's our t. This is the time that's gone through. And we're going to go ahead and square that. So that's x equals x naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. So here is the time that's gone through. And that just comes from these constant acceleration equations. So our acceleration is constant in another little section where our acceleration is constant. OK, so moving these out of the way, what if we started in a different spot? So let's say I'm going to just copy these times over and copy these positions over. So this time around, we're going to fill out this column, only we're going to do it starting with time and position and try and get velocity out of that. So here's our equation for velocity. And this is velocity as a function of position. So we're going to have to have v naught, our starting velocity. So let's say we start with a velocity of 0. The next velocity is going to be equal to 2 times x minus x naught divided by t minus t naught. OK, so there's the first little part. But then from that, we're going to have to subtract off our starting velocity. And you can see 1.65, 1.65. So coming from the other way around, we've gotten the same results. If you double click on the lower right hand corner of that cell, it'll copy that equation all the way down. So as we're walking down, it's just taking little pairs of how that position is changing and how the time is changing and grabbing that previous velocity and just updating to the next velocity and the next velocity. Last column, acceleration. So let's go ahead and grab that acceleration equation again. Acceleration is just change in velocity over change in time. Now, this is a change, so we can't start it with the first cell here. We're going to go to the second cell and say equals 
b2 minus b1 divided by t2 minus t1. So that's change in velocity divided by change in time. And sure enough, there is our 1.5 acceleration again. And as we get into this new velocity region, the acceleration is going to go negative. Once you have your data in here, the next thing to do is to graph this out. So I'm going to grab my position and time data first, say insert a scatter plot, and here is my position versus time data. Next, I'm going to highlight time, hold down my control key, and then highlight velocity, insert my velocity chart. To see how those go with one another, we have the velocity is increasing, the slope is getting steeper, and then my velocity is decreasing, my slope is decreasing until the slope of zero is we're not moving, is a velocity of zero. The last graph, highlight time, hold down my control key, and highlight accelerate. Some of these, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, that's zero. You can ignore Excel as little rounding issues there. So here's my third graph is acceleration. And again, we're starting with a positive acceleration. This means there's there's forces that are acting, that are pushing in a positive direction, that are making the velocity increase in that positive direction. And then my acceleration goes negative. My velocity, this is the slope of my velocity curve. So negative slope, my velocity is slowing down to zero. Negative acceleration, this is the friction. And then at the very end, everything comes to zero. Okay, hope that wasn't too confusing. Be sure and watch that first video too.